Can you imagine a physical education program in which students significantly improve their abilities to perform activities skillfully and show increasing mastery of tactics? Can you imagine that in the same physical education program, students are excited about what they are doing and share in their responsibilities in conducting class activities so that classes run smoothly with few disruptions? It is possible that in this very class, students learn to appreciate and support contributions of classmates with various talents. Sport education connects a bridge between sport-related skills and engagement so that it is possible for students to learn, appreciate, and support the contributions of classmates with varying talents and celebrate their learning and accomplishments with an exciting and positive culminating event. More specifically, sport education is a way of taking a sport and putting it into a school culture to create, authentic, to create an authentic experience. The idea of authentic learning is not just playing the game, but having teams, having roles within those teams, having a championship, having a festival, and having a culminating event that is at the climax of that festival, so that students, through their term or year, build and build and build up to something to show their incredible journey to that spot. Likewise, sport education creates a club in the school that deals with the issues that the sport deals with in society. Instead of just focusing on the sport and playing a game of football and moving on to something else, it creates a culture, immersion, and celebration around that sport. Thus, this improves emotional experiences of the students because of the inclusiveness of the community and involvement that the sport and culture creates. The goal of sport education is to educate students to be players in the fullest sense and to help them develop as competent, literate, and enthusiastic sports persons. A competent sports person has sufficient skills to participate in games and activities satisfactorily, understands and can execute strategies appropriate to the complexity of the activity, and is a knowledgeable games player. Competent students will learn to be comfortable and confident performing in increasingly complex forms of sports and other physical activities. Students cannot be comfortable and confident unless they know where to go, what to do, and how to anticipate the flow of, of events during activities so that they are in the right place at the right moment to achieve the goals of the activity. A literate sports person understands and values the rules, rituals, and traditions of sports and activities and can dis distinguish between good and bad practices and those activities, whether in children's sport, in a community, or, or in professional sports seen on TV. An enthusiastic sports person wants to continue to, to participate actively because they have to come to value the experiences and enjoyment derived from participation. These goals are ambitious. They, are not, they not only embrace this school, the sport education of children and youth, but also have profound meaning for the health and vitality of the general sport and activity culture of a nation. The unique thing about sport education is that it almost never stops. Students are involved all the time with their different team roles. In most forms of youth and school sport, players learn only to be performers. In sport education, however, students learn diverse roles that help them to better understand all the elements contributing to, access to a successful sport experience. Since students are not just confined to playing one specific position, such as a midfielder in soccer or shortstop in baseball, they have the chance to see the sport from a much broader perspective, exposing them to different sport-related professions. The roles that were created in Dr. Hopper's pickleball unit were manager, team spirit coordinator, official, equipment, equipment manager, technology leader, coach, and communication representative. All of our individual responsibilities affected our team score throughout the term, how our team interacted, and how the festival culminated at the very end of the unit. I was the team manager for the Leopards team. Although I was a little bit apprehensive about pickleball to start with, on our very first day the manager was the first position given out. So before I even knew all of these people, I got to have the opportunity to like get to know them and help organize the environment, which made me more comfortable when we started playing pickleball because I wasn't very good at it. And so to already know these people and know that they were willing to 
listen and that I was willing to listen to them made it more comfortable once we got to playing the sport. Okay, so for the sports education model, I was the team communicator and I set up a Facebook page. And through this Facebook page, we were able to communicate um, how we were doing as a team. We were the Tigers. And we um, would write about how many badges we had or uh, how many blogs we've done. And we'd encourage people to do certain things that they were struggling with and also gives an opportunity to help each other with those areas that we were struggling with. Being a spirit rep um, meant that at the pickleball tournament, I, I showed up knowing that I was going to have to bring some energy. And Tim had kind of offered suggestions of how the spirit person could embody the culture on the day of, you know, um, getting practices together, making signs. And I did that kind of stuff. Not really my forte, but during the actual playing, I was like, oh, you go, girl, cheering on all my team members. That was really fun. And I think knowing ahead of time what kind of energy we needed to bring was really helpful for the atmosphere. I mean, we started at 8 o'clock in the morning, too. Like, mm -hmm. oh, gosh, nobody had any natural given energy. So we had to, we had to act it up. And it was good. It was fun. Since Dr. Hopper implemented pickleball with sport education, we learned this game at a greater depth, which allowed us to develop our skills throughout the term. Compared to a normal PE class, where many different activities are taught in a given school year, sport education embraces a less is more philosophy that is consistent with current thinking and education reform. Since we had all term to practice pickleball for the end of term tournament, Dr. Hopper implemented TGFU into our skill development. Throughout the term, Tim always took a step back with pickleball to have us practice and develop the necessary skills to be skilled players. Tim used TGFU to teach us games by playing games. More specifically, in order to learn pickleball, we played many different games and tasks that developed different skills in order to play pickleball effectively. TGFU stands for Teaching Games for Understanding. These small tasks simplified the, the overall game, which allowed for us to refine more simplistic skills. There are six basic TGFU concepts. Teach games through games, break games into their simplest format, then increase complexity. Participants are intelligent performers in games. Every learner is important and involved. Participants need to know the subject matter. And there needs to be a change to match participant skill and challenge. Rather than teaching sport-specific units like volleyball and soccer, we, as well as children and youth, gain skills and knowledge to apply to different sports by playing a variety of games associated with four game categories. Those include target games, in which the participant propels an object, preferably with a high degree of accuracy at a target, net wall games, in which the participant propels an object into space trying to make it difficult for an opponent to return it, striking and fielding games, in which the participant strikes an object so it is placed away from the defenders in the field, and finally territory games, in which participants invade an opponent's territory to score. All these categories represent games and activities that are similar in structure. By exposing children and youth to the primary rules, fundamental skills, and tactical problems associated with each category, they become more literate in a variety of games, activities, and sports, and develop an understanding and competency of the skills and tactics associated with playing the sport. The games that Dr. Hopper had us play all revolved around necessary skills for pickleball, which is a net wall game. These varied from the different animal games that focused on our volleying, moving, and accuracy, accuracy skills to simply hitting a spot on the wall. All of these tasks improved, refined, our pickleball skills that prepared us for the final tournament. <laughs> the final culminating event of sport education and TGFU led to was the final tournament against all the cat groups. Since we worked on specific pickleball-related skills and strategies throughout the whole semester, 
every student had a great amount of practice for the three games that they played. Dr. Hopper created a tournament with unique handicap that had each team give a number to each team member to represent their skill with one being the most skilled and three being the least skilled. Additionally, Dr. Hop Dr. Hopper also made it so during games, if there was one opponent or pat partners that were especially struggling, they were awarded free points. For example, if one person was up one game to zero, the trailing opponent would be up 15 love the next game. If the trailing opponent loses the next game, they would be up 30 love against their opponent the next game, and so on. Since sport education doesn't revolve around skills related to the sport being played during our festival, we were also in charge of officiating each match and performing our team dances. The team dances were added to our total team spirit points, as were our posters, outfits, and overall spirit that we conveyed over the whole term and on the last day of the festival. The unique and rewarding aspect about sport education in relation to our pickleball units is that everyone earned an award. The Lions won the Pickleball Tournament Award, the Tigers won the Overall Team Points Award, the Leopards won the Officiating Award and the Team Spirit Award, and the Panthers won the Most Improved Award. Dr. Hopper provided every winning team with a prize, and the Lions and Tigers earned trophies because of their huge accomplishments during the festival and the term. Throughout the whole tournament, students seemed to enjoy the festivities. Teammates were cheering on fellow teammates, and iPads were even used to document team spirit and various games that were being played across the gym. Beginning of the semester, I didn't know um, anything about pickleball because I've never played a game like that before. And I was designated as my team's official, so I was in charge of teaching everyone the rules and make sure that everyone was following them properly. So I thought that that aspect of the sport education, having everyone having a different role, was really beneficial because if I didn't have that role, or if I didn't have that role, I probably wouldn't have understood the game um, quite as well. Okay. Um, I really enjoyed working with the sport education model. At the beginning of the year, it was quite overwhelming. Um, there was a lot to take in, and meeting into a group of people that you've never knew before, building into teams, was really exciting. Um, from there, we worked throughout the semester, and then we were able to break into smaller teams within our actual cat groups, and we worked in the TGFU. Um, the TGFU was really interesting because when we broke into the games, it actually, if we had someone that wasn't as skilled, we could stop and be like, okay, wait, let's try doing this rather than make, pulling into the main concept. And it really broke it apart nicely because it focused on the small little skills rather than going right into the game. 